that amazing request. This is going to be a, a balancing practice full of full body movement. But we'll start with the neck and shoulders. And what you might allow yourself to place is a blanket Whoa. right here for the shoulder blades, that nice rectangular pillow for the upper back. And we can start with having the feet on the ground, sitting back, slowly reclining so that we bring the scapula, the shoulder blades right on that soft surface of the just slightly elevated blanket. Now for this particular start, we're going to hold the back of the head and lengthen what you might feel is the mid lower ribs sort of expanding upwards and we can keep our feet down the ground so our lower back doesn't have to effort here. You might even walk the feet a couple inches out and bring the knees together. So back up to the head and neck, just as our, our starting uh, restorative pose to get into the practice. We can lightly hold the fingertips at the back of the head, maybe the pointer finger and thumb touch the, the ridge of the skull, we call the occipital part of the skull. And uh, we can lightly, uh, honoring the, the idea of cranial sacral stimulation, just gently rocking the head side to side. Now we are using the arms, your elbows might not touch the ground, so it's not fully restorative, but we're just asking the neck to receive this slow moving rock to one side and then the next. If you want to advance your practice as you're rocking side to side, the thumbs are gonna find that ridge. I'm gonna press lightly. I'm just gonna move the head side to side while those thumbs make an acupressure energy loop. If you've ever rocked a small child or just have the, the appreciation for that bilateral movement, our opening pose of our balancing practice is just holding the shoulder blades softly, rocking the head slowly and finding breath patterns. And deeper inhale and perhaps a slow jaw relaxing <sighs> exhale. We're just going to hold and rock here for just another 30 seconds. Coming to greet your yoga practice at your pace. Now, as you move the head side to side, just a couple more times. Gonna slow the movement down. And treat your head like a, a very beloved coconut or bully ball, but just keep the head nice and, and relax as you lift the head up and just retraction the neck. And then release the back of the head to the ground. Take the arms up over the head and you feel the sides of the body, our lap muscles lengthen. You could even intertwine the thumbs so our feet are grounded, our knuckles may or may not touch the ground. Just take three hard opening breaths here. Nice. And our last bit of time here in this hard opener, you are welcome to savor a fully restorative version, which is simply letting the arms drape out. Uh, triceps are over top the, the edge of the blanket, and then you might let the knees open up into butterfly. Now, if you want a more active, you know, ready to move in our practice, you can keep the feet on the ground, bring them in about uh, a little wider than hip distance, and then bring the elbows together and knees together. So the forearms are over top of the nose and the chin. We're just going to bring the elbows, point them down towards the ribs, circle the elbows out, and you can circle around, widening the knees as the elbows, so you just open the knees a little bit, and then bring the knees back together as the forearms retouch. So we're not trying to create butterfly in this, it's just a little bit of pulsing, the knees open, you might feel the inner thighs stretch. The edges, the outer edge of the feet always stay connected to the ground. A circling is the in-breath, a coming closer together is the out-breath for three. 
Mm-hmm. Centering, coming back together. Two. And the last one, the elbows widen, the knees widen. We know where that breath is fullest. And we come back to that center with the exhale, knees touch, palms touch, eventually forearms, maybe elbows touch. Simply want to cl- take one hand to the back of the neck. Oh, if you are in butterfly, scoop the knees up first. And whichever hand you're holding the back of the neck, left or right, does not matter. Just lean to the opposite side. Roll over just enough so you can remove that blanket out of the way. And then come back down onto the mat, flattening the back into the ground and inviting your knees towards your chest. Nice deep breath into the flattening of the back. And then rock your head side to side. So long ago, this practice when we would meet in person out of the state building in Oakland, how wonderful is it that even as we continue to build this practice, we get to attune to what our body needs in this particular day, practicing in the comfort of your own home. And then I'll invite you to one, restorative style. If you've tapped in and you know another gentle butterfly could be what you want here. You could bring the knees out, feet together, one hand on the belly, one hand on the heart. That's option one. The other is a thymus pump practice with a little more uh, movement involved than that resting butterfly. That's involving bringing the soles of the feet together and pointing the knees out, toes up to the sky. Seal the feet in together, then seal the palms together, fingertips point up just like the toes, elbows up to the side just like the knees. And and if you're in resting in butterfly, just admire your butterfly stillness. While those of us that are thymus pumping, we're going to lift up the limbs, straightening elbows and knees. Try to keep the feet as close together as possible. And then exhale, come back down. The pumping is creating heart and root chakra energy flow higher lift up and then exhale i'm finding because my hips aren't quite so open that my big toes stay touching but my heels kind of separate do your best find the slow moving energy comes through as we stay grounded and go for five pumps four three and your breath pace might be slower than this two and this last one's really important whatever your intention is bring that energy to the heart grounding into the root and completing that round scoop the knees in bring them back up to your chest Mm, we just want to hold and seal that energy in Letting anything we don't need flow down into the mat. It's kind of internal house cleaning, isn't it? Let's roll to one side. Come on up slowly. And assess if our intention has been about kind of balancing. I just want to take a moment in an upright position to see how that's coming along for you. You're welcome to close the eyes. Take some more time away from the pixelated screen. And bringing your hands together in front of the heart. There is a practice of using our inner senses. So you might even with the eyes softly closed, bowing the chin down and allowing what we would call our third eye to get really close to our heart center. In other words, we're looking inwards, trusting our heart, trusting our intuition. Are we at the right place at the right time, caring for ourselves? And this philosophy that has come from years of sitting in the mat with my teachers is how do we continue to find balance in loving our body from the outside in and the inside out? Whatever intention brought you to the mat, repeat it to your heart 
When you're ready, lift the head. You're welcome to keep the eyes closed if you need. Eyes can look towards the screen if my visual, verbal cues don't work so well. Take a nice deep breath in. Just create that heart space. Reach the arms out as far as they can go. You might even find a lift in the chest and the shoulders. And then as you exhale, bring the hands closer and closer together until they lightly touch right in front of the heart. Good. Now adding a little bit more cat-cow, the untuck of the tailbone, maybe the lift of the head. Always be mindful of the neck here. And then exhale, as you bring the palms together, you might tuck the chin in and round. So you round and bring the thumbs even in closer to the ribs, the front of the chest. Inhale, broaden the arms. And exhale, come in closer. Let's just go three more times. Open up and come in closer to and bring it on in. We're gonna do one last round. Blossom, blossom, blossom. And then seal it on in. We're already rounding forward, so take a moment to crawl the hands down towards the ground, even if it's not much more of a forward fold. And if it feels okay to roll off of those crossed ankles, that's great, come into tabletop. If it does not feel okay to roll into the ankles, lean to one side first, and then prepare maybe the blanket to cushion the knees and have your yoga block right there in front of you. This is one of those rare classes where Luna is not demonstrating our uh, Shavasana challenge, which might be just resting the whole time or taking various times in child's pose or their resting places. We'll start with cat-cow, just to energize an uplift in the head and the tailbone, and then balancing that with an opposite tailbone and chin tuck in. Find this rhythm and grace, lift on up, and then bow on in, arching the back like a, a hissing cat. Good. So now as you continue this arching and smiling face of the back, so our cow pose, I call it a smile, and the cat pose is more like a rainbow, you might just flow and start as you come into cow pose, take the right leg back behind you. As you come into cat pose, bring the knee into the chest. We'll continue that four more times. Lift, right heel can point back, head up. Exhale, knee and nose come as close as they possibly can. Lift on the inhale. Exhale, just two more. So you're always welcome to find a rhythm with the breath. Sometimes we do increase the momentum a little bit. On the last one, squeeze that breath all the way out. Then land the right knee, rock the hips side to side. We'll balance, and if that modification I sometimes name in tabletop, if the wrists ever get fatigued, it's okay if you do a forearm tabletop. The head's a little bit lower than the hips, but that's really okay. Your wrists are happier here. Offer a cat cow just to get started. When you come through the next cow pose, tent the right, uh, left heel back, and then draw the knee into the chest. Some people ask, should I be pointing or flexing the foot? Feel it out, what feels best for your calf and your shin. Lifting the heel up, dropping the chin and nose close to the knee as possible. Good, just three more. Float the heel up, exhale, two. And then on this last one, fill up the lungs. Find that release, that's another way to balance, making sure all the out breath leaves the body. Then land the left knee, open the knees wide, stay on the cushion blanket if you need. Take a moment in child's pose. If you are on those wrists the whole time, interlace the knuckles and roll the wrists around. Good. We don't have to overdo tabletop or downward dog in any particular practice. Some, some wrists are just not happy with that much pressure. But if you do wish to bring yourself through any form of downward facing dog to get towards the top of the mat, first look up and see as you fan out the fingertips. Hand health requires us to constantly ask if we can make more space between each of those fingers. Thumbs can face inward and come on up. Maybe the shoulders are already slightly behind those wrists. We lean into the tips of the toes. 
If you're taking downward dog with me, take the knees up, the hips diagonally lift, we'll find space in the back of the knees and calves by lowering the heels. If that gets a little too tense, keep the knees gently bent. So I'm going to make the three out breath horsey sounds just so you can release a little tension through the, the lips. Some people call it horse sound. Some people call it motorboat sound in through the nose. Hopefully your neighbors don't mind you making that sound in a in through the nose. One more time. Walk your feet forward, give those wrists a little break, rest into both feet, reverse a swan dive, come up nice and slowly. And you're finding your way of in this mid practice, hmm, hopefully with a little bit of warmth in the body without doing any harm. I just came to the, the middle of my mat so I can honor your practice just to see how mountain pose feels in your body. So one way to love your body from the out, uh, inside out is to close the eyes and feel into your mountain pose. And one way to find balance is to close your eyes and just stand for a moment, resting into fanned out toes that are pressing into the ground, making sure the knees have that soft, just a micro bend. And then you're welcome to, you know, I call the tin, man dance from the Wizard of Oz, which is rolling into the heels, the edges of the feet, the tips of the toes. The upper body, of course, is moving way more than the ankles. And this can get challenging really fast, especially if we lean too far back in the heels. We don't have toes to grip. The toes might kind of lift up and say, whoa, don't go too far. And just swirl around a couple of times. We want to um, avoid making the head dizzy, but what this does is it offers us a reminder of where we find our center when we come to stillness. Switch out the direction. Good. Make sure that you're keeping from the ankles up to the top of the head. The hips, the shoulders aren't swaying on their own, but they're moving in the same direction at the same time. I'm just gonna briefly swirl one last time. Oh, I wonder if the microphone found that wonderful ankle alignment that I just heard, my, my ankle joint. Come back to center, open up the chest and the shoulders, then bring the hands to the heart center. See if that helps you find the center of your chest. With your eyes open and maybe finding a focal point out in front, we'll take a slow intentional inhale to circle the arms out, up and over the body. Follow your gaze past that focal point, exhale, fold, eventually looking forward and then looking down towards the shins. One half lift to flatten out the back. Appreciate that your hands can land on two blocks on either side if you're using them, or just tent the fingertips. And then step the left foot back, cushion the left knee on that blanket. Grip in with the right heel, come on up slowly into lunge pose. Take those arms up to the sky. One way to playfully work with balance is to not treat it as necessarily a one-legged balance. But as you stay in lunge, giving the left thigh a little length, lean forward. Front knee doesn't want to go past the ankle. And you, you might just start to dust the, the ceiling with your fingertips and start to swirl the body around and play with your center of gravity here. The arms might move in controlled yet unusual patterns. I can just dance while the body finds grounding in the feet. Good. And this can be both cooling in the arms but warming in the core. Some people even call this a crown chakra cleanse. Nice. You're going to create a different pattern, finish on up. And then once more, find your center, sealing the hands right to the heart. Ah. Tall, lengthening spine as you inhale, crisscross your left tricep to the right thigh. If you want to challenge, you'll see the back toes, left toes could turn under, back knee might lift, then you twist. 
powerful, powerful inhale. Using the palms to press so we can look up and past our right elbow. Fullest breath in. Let's unwind, release slowly. Yes! Middle of the practice. A celebratory yay. My lunge legs feel this pose a lot. Bring the fingertips down. Now the short scenic route is simply stepping forward and taking a while in mountain pose. You want the long scenic route. Take your right foot back into a downward dog. Take a brief moment to plank the body. Shoulders right over those wrists. Knees, chin and chest can lower down. Scoot your nose maybe right to that block. High heart lift in up dog or low heart lift in low cobra. And then press into downward facing dog. Take a moment here. Use the quads if you're feeling energized to walk or hop, springing to the top of the mat. Coming on up slowly. Take a brief moment, hands to the heart center. I just notice centering the whole body. Even in a brief vinyasa that we just did, we might find that the heart rate increases some. Can we let the intentional breath not allow more tension to build in the neck or shoulders, but just to find softness? Ready for our second side. On your inhale, circle the arms, reach them way up over the head. Exhale, take a bow, forward folding. Half lift to the spine. There it is, fold deeper yet. Fingertips on either side. This time the right foot steps back. Right knee can land. Top of the right foot down as well. Grip in with the left heel. We want to walk it forward if we're finding the knee way past the ankle. And then rise on up, coming into your version of lunge. Find purposeful lengthening of the back thigh. Find meaningful care of the left knee, keeping it over the ankle. And with the lifted arms, you might then playfully stir around the arms. So while there's movement, change in the air, do you still find something grounding about the foot and the back knee? Because you know what's coming up, you might just find the upper body playfully exploring different ways to test your balance. Good. And the key of yoga is to notice what our patterns or habits are and how to change them up into more meaningful connection to our body. Sweetness. Take a little bit more time. Another breath in. Find stillness in the spine and then center the hands right in front of your heart. Breathe into the tallness. Let the right tricep find the left thigh. Stack the tricep there. Nudge into the left thigh and then look up past the left elbow. You've got that option. Back toes might lift uh, turn under so that the right knee can lift off the blanket just for a few breaths and challenge that balance here. Grounding in the feet, turning the head past the left elbow, take another breath in. If that back knee was lifted, lower it down. Ha! <sighs> Find one more traction, lengthening spinal inhale, and then unwind from the top of the head down the spine, back to center. Excellent. Celebrate your practice where you are today, right here, right now. Take the arms up. Inhale. Lower those hands down. You're welcome to skip the scenic or go to the short scenic route and step forward or step that left foot back. With intentional movement, our plank pose is there. Stabilize with strength, integrity. Exhale, knees, chin and chest down. Elbows in so close. Heart lifts, this time I'm demonstrating a low cobra. Lower the chin and chest down. Reverse that push-up. Come back through downward dog. And knowing you've got just one more standing sequence, you're welcome to tiptoe, walk or hop forward. Enjoy. Anyone who did not do that flow will all meet up right there. Reverse that. Circling in the arms, we come to rest in our mountain pose.
This round will take the arms to the side. Breathe down, down, down into the feet. Let the exhale open up the chest some more. Excellent. So we're, we're going to allow a challenge for anyone that's more used to having a focal point. It's nice to have something right at about eye height, somewhere across the room, one particular spot. The invitation to challenge your body, if you're building more balance, is to actually close the eyes here. You might want to decide based on what I'm about to share as far as what our balance practice is today. Okay, so the simplest version, and you can watch this demonstration, is simply walking in place. The arms can stay to the side. We just bring one set of toes off the ground. The knee may come up a little higher. And then we want to land the foot right where we found it. Good. We just shift. Notice shifting the weight into the foot we just lifted. So the opposite heel, opposite toe comes on up. We're just walking in place. And you can use the upper body to shift weight. We want to make sure we're not torquing the body in some way that's harmful. Because actually when we're walking, we're using the momentum to take us forward. Walking in place can be a little bit more challenging. Okay. So with that focal point, you continue walking in place. If you want another challenge here, you can, as you lift the knee, circle the arms up. The palms might touch over the head. It's okay if they don't. And then lowering the foot down, lowering the arms down. Take your time. It's like walking in place and, and yoga jumping jacks, right? Knee lifts, arms lift option. Lower down. Soften, shift weight. Opposite knee lifts, arms still lift. Lower the foot, lower the arms. If you're really working on balance, just simply keeping the toes on the ground, lifting the heel, lowering the foot. Toes stay on the ground, heel lifts opposite side, knee just bends a little bit forward, and then lower the heel, lower the foot. Good. We're just gonna do an even amount on each side. So that when you, even the shoulders get a little workout here, when you make sure you do enough on the right and left, you want to find that stability, stand in place. We've used our quads quite a bit in that, so again, the heart rate might rise just a touch. Before we get closer to the ground, let's take three of our deepest breaths right here. Bringing your hands to the heart center. On your inhale, circle the arms. Take a finishing chest opening. Lift up the fingertips. Exhale, take the arms back out. Forward folding. Half lift brings the spine lifting. We'll take a finishing forward fold. Those that need to come right down to seated, please do. Hanging out in the forward fold, our last neck and shoulder with an inversion could be interlacing the knuckles to the sky or simply placing the hands to the lower back, pointing the elbows up to the sky. Breathe in fully, exhale slowly. Breathe in fully, exhale slowly. Whatever you find here, it's your gift of awareness. Inhale slowly, exhale slowly. Shake out your jaw. See if we've done some of that work in finding grounding, finding balance. I'm going to let the arm just drape on forward. And then slowly bend the knees, safely come down to seated. Mm -hmm. Our blanket that was used to use upon our shoulder opening. Now have a chance to return to a little hip opening, sealing the feet together. 
there is a good chance that with this lift up, our knees still don't even get close to the ground. We want to decide if our inner thighs have opened enough to perhaps use our elbows as props into those inner thighs or into the inner calves. And then hold the feet, nudge the elbows into the inner legs and hold the feet and bow forward. So we're just allowing the elbows to nudge as much as they might need. And of course, we are intentionally rounding the back and giving the shoulder blades permission to rise or widen. You might feel like we're holding cat pose here. Neck and shoulders, we haven't forgotten you. We can allow this forward fold, nudge the elbows in, but then lift up the heart just enough so we can take the right elbow underneath the left and then come into eagle arms. So it could be that the right hand holds the left thumb or goes knuckle to back of the hand. That's too much of an opening. Just hold the opposite shoulders and stay right here. Good. Elbows can lift right at about heart center. Chin, neck and jaw might find a little sway side to side. Hmm. Breathe in fully and this time rather than rounding the back, try to lift the chin up, elbows forward. Take a deep breath in. Broaden the shoulder blades some more. How can any of these movements remind us as we think of stepping off the mat later on? How can we find these precious places of self-care even when we're not on the mat? What a gift to ourself. We're going to take a moment, switch out arms, circle, maybe bow forward a little bit, and then bring the left elbow to nest underneath the right Either opposite shoulder hug, left hand can hold the right thumb or knuckle to back of the hand. Elbows lift up, shoulders stay low, neck has space to breathe. Hmm. We might point the elbows further forward and let the head roll back. We'll notice the core having to work here. Be kind to the lower back here. Three. Take another deep breath in, we'll just hinge forward, circle the arms, and then we scoop the outer knees, lift up the torso, and help the feet flatten into the earth. Quads, inner thighs, got a pretty deep stretch there, so go in for a nice seated child's pose, hug, rib cage towards the thighs, chin or cheeks towards the knees. Last opportunity to broaden the back of the shoulder blades, hugging in closely. Breathe into the fullest. Ah, back body opening. Exhale, roll up off of those thighs. Blanket could be used for a little head or neck cushion. We make enough space to lie down. Be sure that you've got your block or another folded blanket within hand's reach. We'll lie on down, support the neck. A key alignment principle here in most traditions is just making sure that the, the back of the head feels flattened. If the chin's tucking much higher upwards than the forehead, we can just um, help relax the neck by flattening it down as best we can. Once you've got the neck situated, it feels comfortable to leave the hands from there. We'll land the feet down, heels are underneath the knees. We just want to take the block lift the lower back and slide the upper edge of the block. Usually the shortest height works as a starter right to the waistline. And then the, the wider part of the block is right there in the sacral spine area. Right, so this flat area is where the back feels most restful. One cue is to make sure that any edge of a block or blanket isn't causing the lower back to feel uncomfortable or pressed into. Once you've got the block or blanket supported, feel free to walk those shoulder blades underneath you. So now, opposite of those earlier seated sequence, we get the chest to open up. And you can exaggerate walking those elbows in closer and closer and just letting the palms face up, knuckles curled. Some traditions have you interlace the knuckles, which is fine, but if you've got a block there, it might be with the forearms press into it. 
more passive way of opening the chest is simply encouraging the shoulder blades to walk underneath and still allowing the palms to turn upwards. This could be your, your resting back bend. Those that have an active practice, it's really okay if the blocks moved and you, you pulse through a free form of bridge. If you're in bridge, you might do a little bit more hip opening where you just simply cross the right ankle over the left thigh and hang on out. The left foot doesn't leave the ground. This right knee leans out, so it might feel as if the lower back's gonna be um, caused to be imbalanced, but that's where we find that gentle in-between place of letting the block support the back and not letting that right knee tilt the body too much. Full breath in. Does the right knee respond to gravity, just opening it up? If you notice the left side body leaving the block, recenter first and find that beautiful give and take between engagement and relaxation. Offer three more breaths to the side. When you become familiar with restorative poses, some people take those poses and build up to five or more minutes in them. For the sake of our, our shorter class, you just practice, feel it out. Give your body this care and compassion. We're ready to switch sides. Lower that right foot down. Make sure you can recenter the spine. And then as you're ready, left ankle can cross over the right thigh. If you haven't already determined this in your body, sometimes we notice in these side to side movements just what side of the hip has a little more range of motion, what side might be tighter. And that awareness is something that we bring in free of judgment, full of compassion. As the left knee leans out, gravity holds it. Make sure the right side body isn't lifting too far off the block. And with these next three slow breath cycles, where might the body be finding that? Beautiful give and take between engagement and relaxation. Simply going to uncross the left leg, land the foot. If you do feel like, well, bridge on a block is exactly what I need, you could walk the feet away from the block, heels stay down, and we take a, a arched, Shavasana just for a brief while. Now, of course, this is where that self-guided encouragement comes through. Anytime you're ready to come off of the block, we just land the feet flat down, heels underneath the knees, and then move the block out of the way so the spine can land down. Take a moment to rock out the knees, of of course, if Bridge is still calling you, just know that the sequence awaits you shortly. And if there is any self-guided movements, including holding a pose, continuing this rocking of the knees, or perhaps taking a finishing happy baby that helps us find balance in the spine, there is such a wide array of poses, shapes that we do not get to every class. So this is that moment where you ask the body, what do you need, body? Are you ready for Shavasana? Is there something else we might offer before that? If and when Shavasana or legs up the wall or another resting pose calls to you, do you make sure that the body, if it's warmed up some, it could cool down rather quickly, either just draping a towel over the feet or the shoulders can be helpful. And we want to allow this inhale to come in through the nose, fill the whole body, almost as if the back body lifts up off the ground. And then our exhale finds its way slowly, slowly sink deeper into the mat, into this pose. I'm gonna briefly serenade your resting pose with a root chakra bowl.
Invite you to find a breath that centers you, that gives you the gift of awareness, but also lets you find a gentle reminder that there's no rush out of this pose. Maybe that you just let the body appreciate the deepening of the breaths. So that when the body's ready to start movement, it could start in the jaw wiggling. It could start in the fingertips fiddling together. You might reach the arms way up over the head, stretching out the sides of the ribs. And then bending the knees into the chest. Hugging in closely at your pace. You know that when you rest into those arms, that helps the back stay relaxed as you come up. So hopefully reconnect with the breath, the spine upright, the intention that brought you here, and perhaps the intention that's going to take you off the mat. In closing in this balancing practice full of kindness for the body. I want to share two uh, lines from the movie Everything Everywhere All at Mo Once. It is still in the theaters at this point here in the Bay Area. It probably will be streaming somewhere sometime soon, but it's Everything Everywhere All at Once. And the character Waymond says these two things. When I choose to see the good side of things, I'm not being naive. It's a strategic and necessary way I've learned to survive through everything. And the second sharing of wisdom is, <laughs> the only thing I know is that we have to be kind. Please be kind, especially when we aren't sure what's going on. Thank you very much for being a part of this pre-recorded class and motivating me, inspiring me if you were part of the live class. See you next time.